Let's pray as we begin. Father God, as we consider these words of Jesus, speak into our hearts and our minds. Transform us by your spirit. May we become the kind of person you want us to be. Amen. Well, today's sermon is the third in our series, Looking at the Beatitudes. Could we have the first screen on, uh, on the projector, please? Possibly not. Is it not working? Not to worry, we'll carry on. Uh, blessed are the meek, is what we are thinking about. For they shall inherit the earth. Uh, two weeks ago, Jim Rennie looked at Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Last week, John looked at, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And I have to say, both of them were really, really excellent sermons. If you want to catch up on them, they're on the YouTube channel. But today, I'm going to speak over, blessed are the meek, and I'm going to break it into three parts. Firstly, I'm going to think about the Beatitudes in a little bit more depth. Uh, secondly, I want to think about what does the word meek mean? And then thirdly, I want to look at what is the result of being meek? What does it mean to inherit the earth? So starting off with the Beatitudes. The Beatitudes come from the Sermon on the Mount. They're found in Matthew's Gospel, uh, chapter uh, 5, verses 3 to 12. So that's only 10 verses. 10 verses that are revolutionary teaching. But it often seems the words that we're we're saying or hearing are back to front or upside down. And I came across this kind of illustration. This is from a, an advert by Jeep. And the idea is you need to say what you see. So when you look at that, you might see a cow or a deer. But if you turn it upside down, you get a seal. Clever, isn't it? How about this one? Elephant, fairly obvious. Actually, if you look upside down, it's a swan. And this one, it's a horse or a giraffe, giraffe probably, I think, or a penguin. Clever, isn't it? The Beatitudes are a bit like that. It's all about looking at things that are upside down, as it were. Some of you will have heard the phrase, blessed. Or perhaps you've seen it on social media, hashtag blessed. What does it really mean? What does it really mean? Well, to be blessed means far more than just being happy. Happiness is subjective. It's a kind of thing that I feel when I walk into the house and I can smell that Priscilla has cooked my favorite tea. But the blessing of God isn't dependent on our feelings. And the word blessing can actually also be translated as wonderful news, wonderful news. This is about a deep inner joy that, uh, that we feel. Deep, deep joy. The kind of joy that Mary expressed in our gospel reading when she heard she was pregnant with God's son. It's wonderful news indeed. Well, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus is teaching the crowds. But all of these beatitudes that we're hearing about, they aren't about some distant and future realm or kingdom. These are actually for the now. The blessings start now. Now, as we live by Jesus' rule and reign here, in God's kingdom on earth. And Jesus is making a statement about the way it is in God's kingdom. He's challenging the disciples and the crowds to start seeing things differently. He's challenging us to see things differently. And we need to respond accordingly. These are values that flow from being part of the kingdom of God, being in a relationship with God. The Beatitudes are be attitudes, the kind of way we need to be. So that's a bit of an introduction to the Beatitudes. But today we're looking at blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Uh, and like many of the other Beatitudes, we'll see in this one that it's a paradox. Something that goes against what the world would say is a normal order of things. Something that goes against the flow of humanity's philosophy, the humanistic philosophy that our world believes in. 
But actually, I think we've experienced something over the last year which shows a glimpse of that, a recognition that some of the least well-paid amongst us are the most valued in our society, brought on by the pandemic. Perhaps that's why there are more people than ever starting to train in those professions. I think that's really encouraging news. The meek shall inherit the earth. But what does that word meek mean? Um, I should just say, incidentally, I'm not looking particularly or specifically at the Bible readings. Rather, these are just good, solid, biblical examples of what meekness is about. You know, Mary, on learning that she is to become the mother of God. The Greek word for that is theotokos. Theotokos. Mother of God. That could make you really big-headed, couldn't it? But Mary doesn't see it like that. She sees it as a privilege. And, it, and we see an example of humility and meekness in Mary. But then we heard the story of the tax collector as well, recognizing he's fallen short of God's standards. That's another element of meekness. But what does the word meek actually mean? If you look in the Oxford English Dictionary, the word meek is defined as quiet, gentle, and easily imposed on, submissive. Let me say categorically, no matter what it means in the current English language today, that definitely is not the description of meek in the Bible. That is not what the biblical word meek means. If you want a better idea, I suggest you look at it on Wikipedia. It's a far better definition. So I need to start by saying meek does not mean weak. Neither does it mean spineless, feeble, lifeless, dreary. It's not wishy-washiness. It's not to be indecisive, to be timid or fearful or unsure of yourself. It's not even to be polite or to be affable or naturally kind or nice. To be meek is not cowardice. It's not a willingness to have peace at any cost. It's definitely not the opposite of being an extrovert, although some people might think it is. And it's certainly not a lack of conviction. If you want an example of somebody who was none of those things, but is described as meek in the Bible, Moses. Moses was a murderer. He confronted the most powerful person in the world and told him he was wrong. He led a people for 40 years in the wilderness. Moses was not meek. Or Moses was meek, he was not weak. Meekness has been described as a true view of oneself expressed in the way you view and behave towards others. A true view of yourself expressed in the way you view and behave towards others. And I guess in that we see a reflection of the tax collector and the Pharisees' differing attitudes in our first reading. Now it's very easy, as Judith prayed in the prayers, uh, to see ourselves in a different way to the way other people see us. It's very easy to be oversensitive to what other people say about us. Or even oversensitive to what other people might think about us. It's very easy to have a really high opinion of ourselves or a really low opinion of ourselves. But that isn't being meek either. And I want to say a little bit more on this because I believe this is one of the most challenging things in today's society. Especially, but not exclusively, amongst young people. Because this is about self-image. You know, we all tend to be sensitive about ourselves, especially the way other people perceive us. You know, if the first thing that happens to me when someone says something negative is I want to, I've got an urge to defend myself. How other people perceive me is important to me. I wonder if you're a bit like me, that on the second day of a beach holiday, you ache. You really ache. It's not because of sunburn. It's because of the first day of the holiday, you've been walking around with your stomach tucked in, so you look like you've got a flat chest and a flat stomach on a... Now, of course, you can see I've given up on that now. But that's the kind of thing. How other people perceive us or see us. How other people perceive me can seem important to me. You know, one of the biggest 
barriers in life we can have as humans is an overly se being overly sensitive about ourselves. And it can be a really serious issue. In today's world of social media, Facebook, Instagram and so on, there's a real tendency to only present to the world a certain image. Our best photos, our filtered images. But that leads to so much mental and emotional damage. And it leads people to have low self-esteem. It can lead to a sense of worthlessness as we compare ourselves to others. For some people it leads to illness through dieting, unhealthy dieting, bulimia, anorexia and so on. Sadly for some people it can even lead to suicide. If we compare ourselves to those on TV or on social media or bridal magazines or whatever, we only see a filtered impression, but it can lead us to have an unhealthy distraction with our own image. It can lead us to spend our whole lives watching ourselves. How many likes have we got on our latest Facebook post? How many hits on our website? How many hearts on our Instagram post? How many views of coronavirus keep fit with Reverend Jim have there been on the YouTube channel? When a person's meek, that stops being so important. They finish with that. They don't worry about themselves in the same way or what others say in that kind of sense. So if that isn't what being meek is about, let's start to think about what it does mean in a bit more depth. You know, if other people's opinions don't actually matter, we have to ask ourselves, well, whose opinion does matter? And the answer, of course, to that is God's opinion. And I can tell you now, God's opinion of you is the most important thing. And he loves you. He loves you. He doesn't always approve of what you do or say. But he still loves you and he always will love you. And it's only when we realize that that we can really understand what meek means. And it might be helpful to think here of the example of Jesus. After all, he's the one we try to, to be like. He's described as meek in the Bible. Some of you might remember this film from 20 years ago, The Passion of the Christ. It was an 18 certificate. It was shockingly realistic and an accurate portrayal of the events of Jesus' last hours. But it also, importantly, gave insight into how Jesus faced death and those involved in his execution. That's the kind of meekness that we're talking about. Strength under control. His body is broken, but Jesus remains in control. So to understand what meek actually means, let's go back to the language this was originally written in, which is Greek. In Greek... The word meek had three usages. It was used by doctors. Doctors were used it to describe a soothing medicine that would take away pain. Sailors used the word meek of a lovely, cool breeze that refreshed them. A farmer would use the word meek to describe a horse that was broken and able to be used in a useful way on a farm. So basically, meekness is simply this. It is power under control, keeping control of yourself. It reminds me of the story of two women who happened to meet uh, walking down the street. They went to school 40 years ago. And as happens, they got into a, went to school together. As it happens, they got into a conversation. And the first woman says, you see that massive house over there? That's where my first, chi when my first child was born. My husband bought that and built that beautiful mansion for me. And the other woman commented, well, that's nice. The first woman continued, when my second child was born, my husband brought me that beautiful Porsche you can see park drive. And the second lady commented, well, that's nice. Yet again, the woman carried on boasting. When my third child was born, my husband brought me this exquisite diamond bracelet. Well, isn't that nice, said the other one. The first woman was a bit put out by this. So she said to the second woman, 
what did your husband buy you when you had your first child? Oh, said the, first, the second woman, my husband sent me to charm school. Charm school, said the first woman. For goodness sake, why on earth did he send you to charm school? Well, said the second woman. So instead of saying, who gives a flying monkey? I learned to say, well, isn't that nice? <laughs> Keeping control. Power under control. Medicines. Drugs can be powerful, which if not used under control, can destroy you. Wind, like hurricanes, they can be devastating and send ch ships to and fro. But for a ship to sail well, it requires wind under control. Wild horses, like a, a bucking bronco, can be out of control. They can damage and hurt things and people. But a broken horse is power under control. You know, it's almost a bit like that poem, If, from Rudyard Kipling. So if that's meek, what does it mean to inherit the earth? This is again all about that upside down, topsy-turvy kingdom of God. This is something Mary recognised and that she described in, in the song that we, she wrote, in Mary's song, our second Bible reading, verses 51 to 53. And it is so unlike those we see who chase an earthly kingdom today. We're promised a world beating this, the greatest ever that. That's not the kind of boastfulness we see in God's kingdom. This is about what meekness brings into our lives. This is the opposite of Darwin and all that he said with survival of the fittest. This is survival of the meekest. The meek will inherit the earth. And it will bring great joy. Because we're given it knowing that we don't deserve it. But actually that's God's grace in a nutshell. He's giving us something we don't deserve. And when we realize that, we start to inherit the earth. Like Mary. Like the tax collector. Our humanistic, self-focused mindset would say to people, we're our own God. We're our own boss. We'll do it our way. We'll live on our own terms. We'll have our own values. But that's nothing new. That was the same philosophy as those who listened to Jesus. So who were these people who were listening to Jesus at the time? Well, there had been a whole load of different people in the crowd, including amongst them some Pharisees, some zealots or revolutionaries. There had been Sadducees. And they'd have all been really shocked by the things that Jesus is saying in these Beatitudes. It goes against everything they've stood for. Jesus says, the meek shall inherit the earth. And it's got two kind of aspects. It's got a spiritual sense. In that sense, it's having nothing but possessing everything. Having nothing but Jesus, only Jesus, because that's all we need. We sang that at the end of our last service here. My hope is built on nothing less. Our final song today captures this same thing. But secondly, there's also a literal sense. The zealots said, we want a military messiah. The Pharisees said, we want a religious messiah that will bring the kingdom by miracles. The Sadducees said, we want a materialistic messiah because there is no life after death. All that matters is what's here and now. And in those three groups, we see similarities with different ideologies around the world today. Militaristic, religious, materialistic. That's what they said they wanted. But what did Jesus say? He said, yeah, you'll get a Messiah. But you're going to get a meek Messiah. Not like you expect. You're going to get a servant king. And it's only those who are meek who will inherit the earth. That is what meekness is. And also what meekness brings. It brings inheritance of the whole earth. So beginning to wind things up a bit here. To be meek is more than just strength under control. Because this idea of the word meek in the Greek culture also has a strong ethical element. One of the theologians from the last century, William Barclay, said there were three elements to this. And with that in mind, he reinterpreted this way of translating the Beatitude into 
a bigger language than we phrase it. The bliss of the man who is always angry at the right time, but never angry at the wrong time. Who has every instinct and impulse and passion under control because he himself is God-controlled. Who has the humility to recognize his own ignorance and his own weakness. Such a man is king among men. To be meek actually means gentle, kind, humble and considerate. To be broken like Jesus, not like a broken plate, broken in pieces, but like a horse is broken, strength under control. And broken by our knowledge and acceptance of who we are and our position before God. And there's a kind of movement in the first three of the Beatitudes we've been looking at so far. From being poor in spirit, which leads to mourning for our distance from God's standards. Which leads to the meek realisation that other people's opinions don't matter, only God's. And when we live our lives based on how God sees us, at that point we will inherit the earth. I once heard a very wise woman saying this. We choose a Beatitudes lifestyle because we have been accepted. Not in order to be accepted. This is about being a follower of Jesus. Jesus who is described in the Bible as a lion and a lamb. So to finish today, I want to give you a question to ponder. I'm going to give you a minute's reflection to think about this, and then we're going to our creed. But here's the question that I want you to ponder. How will you work at being more meek in your life over this coming week? How will you work at being more meek in your life over this coming week? We'll have a minute's reflection of video.